Oh, this is getting interesting today, fellas. Okie doke. So what we have here is big torque numbers disproving the internet once and for all. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of South Down Garage. My name is Kurt and we're back here at Post Ace Performance on the dyno with the delete fully done. Well, with an eco pipe and stock airbox again. I've taken this stock airbox out, back in, out, in, out, so many times I can't even count. So many times that Dan's like, what in the living crap are you doing, man? But we're getting real numbers here today. So we've done our first run of the day. We've got 256 foot-pounds of torque and we have 138 horsepower. So over the stage two with factory air box is 238 foot-pounds of torque and it was roughly around 138 horsepower as well. The big thing to keep in mind here is the mid-range. So basically the, the peak horsepower with the stage two OEM box, no delete, was 136 and a half horsepower. It's a, basically a two horsepower gain with the delete done. The big thing that you're gonna see here is you can see how the line stays up further. So like it starts further, so your um, between 2000, well, just about, so yeah, just about 1900. So between 1800 and 1900, it's, the increase is about 20 horsepower. That's significant when you're talking about launches. The other thing to consider too is where is, is the boost? The boost over the initial tune from yesterday was the big, the big talk of the town. So we went up from 23, PSI to 25 and a half PSI, that's a considerable jump. If you look at back down to when we did the original, it was about 20 PSI. So from 20 PSI to now with the DPF delete, we're about just under 26, so I'll say we can call it 26 PSI. That's a considerable amount of power increase. Uh, the computer is demanding more, more boost, and that's where you're seeing this curve coming up and then the slight correction on some of these other ones. Whereas the DPF delete has a very low correction. Granted that some of this, some of this torque carries up and over, but the gradual line is considerable. So that there is the difference between a stage two and a DPF tune with the delete done eco only, like still factory exhaust back. So now let's do the run with the intake and see if that makes any difference and where it makes difference. And I'll be honest with you, what we're probably gonna see, we're gonna see a little sooner spool up and then we're gonna see this, this dip down at the back flatten out more. So it's gonna be a better, it's gonna be more, more gradual slope. We'll see how the numbers are. Maybe, maybe they, it'll be surprising and it'll like be crazy increase. But to be honest, I'm expecting, I'm expecting the curve to be flatter because there'll be less boost correction. That's what you're seeing here is where the dip in the purple line, this is the boost, that's where you're seeing the most change. And that's where you're gonna see a torque drop and your horsepower drop because the computer is trying to control the boost. It's seeing too much boost at a certain point so it's dropping it off. So let's go ahead and see if it makes more boost.
Okay, so now we've completed the second run of the day today. We're explaining the second run. So now we can sort of talk numbers here. What actual power did we see with the intake? We're gonna look here and point out one, one specific thing. You're seeing about 255 foot-pounds of torque and 258 foot-pounds of torque after we did the intake install. But exactly like we said, so right here you're seeing it's 25.5 PSI. And you see, how th this is the interesting part. This is about the intake. I'll be honest with you. As we're looking at it, we're getting about a two horsepower difference. Where you, what you need to look at is how it's quick, quicker to spool up. The other thing that we mentioned before on the last run is how we're pretty sure that it would iron out those low spots. So if you look at the difference here, you're looking at 276 versus 187. So you're looking at 10 horsepower difference right in the middle here. That's pretty key because also you're looking at 20.4 versus 21.5 PSI versus the last run we just did with, without the intake and the stock. And the other thing here is you're looking at about two, 123 horsepower and 136 horsepower with the intake. So it actually does smooth out everything. But here's the interesting part. Overall, it makes two horsepower. In certain areas, it can make as high as 10 horsepower difference. But it's not the full range making 10 horsepower. It does make more than if you had the factory air box. So what you need to consider when buying an intake is, is the more consistent power what you're looking for? If I was an air intake manufacturer, I would say this makes 10 horsepower gains. Now, granted, it, does, it may not look that way, but right at the mid high power band where you're starting to drop off here at about 3,800 RPM, you're still pulling more boost. You're still pulling more torque and horsepower. So if you're racing, you probably want this. I'll be honest with you. If, and if you just love hitting the rev limiter every time you drive, you definitely want to keep the power band up. So that's what you have to consider. Up right off the get-go, it's spooling quicker. It makes a bit more power, a bit more boost, but it's at the very end where you're seeing the massive increase for that short bit between, I think it's 3,600 RPM and 3,900 RPM where you're seeing in a smooth line rather than a dip. So now let's go ahead and put on this exhaust and let's see how much the basic cat back system will put on your Jetta. Wow, that exhaust sounds awesome. So, does it make a difference? Well, it sort of does. So, the catback exhaust on this thing does not make a whole whack of power. So, let's take a look at this quickly. Let's throw this line up. Let's take a, oh dear. So, it literally made two horsepower difference. Um, from the last run to this run. So I think the last one was 256. This one is 258. It's, it's not a whole lot. Uh, over the power band, it does carry more torque higher until it hits about 3,700 and then it drops a bit. So it doesn't add a whole lot of power. But would I install it if I knew this now going forward? Oh, absolutely. See, not all mods need to have gains to be something you want to do. This thing sounds phenomenal with this aftermarket exhaust. Like, it is night and day. Like, you will hear it coming. 
Well, this car was so quiet when we started with that exhaust, it woke it up, it, it's a lot louder. If that's not what you're looking at, then maybe it's not for you. Here's my takeaway from this whole video series. Biggest horsepower gains we saw was from the stage two tune with stock intake and the DPF. I mean, we did see power gains with the intake. I, no disputing that. But the biggest changes we saw was the tune. So if you're looking for what to spend money on, what to budget for, if I was doing it, I would buy myself the tune. You're gonna see the biggest increase with that. So with the intake, we saw quicker spool ups and we saw a smoother curve. We didn't see dips in the boost because the engine wasn't trying to correct the boost level like it was when he, with just the tune. But if you're looking at raw massive numbers, the stage two tune, then the delete made the most difference. The intake at the end of it, it gave us a consistent curve with a quicker spool up. The exhaust giving us two horsepower gain, two foot pounds of torque increase, it really gave that little child inside of me a massive grin. And for that, I would buy that. <laughs> because I'm an idiot and I like my cars to be loud, as long as they don't drone. And that's why I put the muffler in there, so that it would, it would be an all around good sound, not crazy loud. I don't want it to sound like my 12 valve because that's, that's loud. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please take a look at the stuff provided to me by Raw Tech Performance. They are a great help. Their stage two delete is phenomenal. Tunezilla for your support along the way. I did purchase this tune with Tunezilla from Raw Tech Performance. So I'll leave a link for Raw Tech in the description below. If you're trying to play around, if you buy the Tunezilla, you can actually contact Tunezilla, or sorry, if you buy the Tunezilla controller, you can actually contact Tunezilla. You can do data logging on the dyno and then send it out to them and say, hey, what can you do for me? Please give a thanks to Raw Tech Performance when you call for your intake and DPF delete and as well with the tune because they helped me immensely. We learned a lot over the last two episodes about what it takes, what difference do certain things make, and when you should buy an intake. And I'm gonna say right now, buy an intake after you're doing the tune, because before the tune, it didn't make much of a change because the stock airbox wasn't at the limit. Now that we're adding more power, we're seeing that limit, and with the airbox, it's, it's assisting us to get more power the full way around. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment for us, let us know how we did. And if you wanna see more content on the Jetta, take a look at this video over here. Or if you wanna see the first dyno video, take a look at this video over here. Have a wonderful day, get outside, do something with your car, and enjoy your weekend. Bye for now.